Okay, so now that we have our app bar appearing on at the top, we're now going to add an element for our content. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually change the name of this app layout to be the bar. So we did not call that the correct name last time. So we're just going to call that bar and then we're going to add another element here that's going to be the content. So we're going to call that content, but first we need to add that element here. So we're going to call this content and that's going to be another div and uh, that's all we're going to add in there so far. We just want to add in some simple text in here. So we're going to close this out. And now you're, you'll notice it's, again, giving me an error here. It's because we actually do need to define another div on top of this. So we're just going to put a div on here. And this div is actually going to be our app layout. So let's actually go and create this app layout here, which will be a div. And this one is going to have the padding. So just a little refactoring here. The app layout is going to be surrounding the bar and the content elements. So now in the content, we're just going to say, hello, I'm content. And we know what the bar is going to look like. So we're going to save that. So we have our bar showing up top and then our content displaying below, which is what we want. So that's good. Now, the only thing here is we're gonna add in some margin bottom on this app bar here. So if we say margin bottom, 40 pixels, that'll just give us a little more space between the, the actual bar and the content. So that's good. Okay, so now we have a basic content element here. Now what we're gonna to wanna to do is add in some React functionality so that we can get some, some dynamic content in, in here. So we want to be able to know that when we select the dashboard and when we select the settings, on click, we want to change the content to be uh, reflective of that new content. And so through React, we're going to maintain some state variables now. So the first thing we're, want to, we're going to want to do is to specify whether or not these dashboard or settings links are actually active or not. And in order to do that, we're gonna actually define a state. So the first thing we wanna do is define state here, and we're gonna set the default page to be the settings. Actually, let's set the default page to be dashboard. So we're gonna set the default page to be dashboard here, and we're just gonna have this display the current page, this.state.page. So we're gonna save that. And so there you go. So now the default page is going to be dashboard. And then you could see here, we're referencing that through this.state.page, surrounding it by brackets. So that's how we're going to know what page we're currently on. So now we're going to want to install some simple click handlers on the dashboard and the settings so that we can click. But before we do that, we're gonna to wanna to know that we're on the active dashboard because otherwise we don't know there's no symbol up here that that there's nothing symbolizing that this is actually active right now so we're going to then define a helper here which is actually going to let us know if we're in the dashboard page or not so let's go down here and we're going to say is dashboard or displaying dashboard and this is going to be a function that's just going to say whether or not this.state.page is equal to the word dashboard. Let's just then call that inside of our buttons. So in our button here, we're going to add a property, which is going to say active. And in that active property, we're going to say this.displaying dashboard. And what that's going to say is when this displaying dashboard boolean returns true, this active property will also be true. And now we're gonna add that on here in this one. However, we're gonna make a small change with this, which is going to be displaying settings instead. So when we go here, we're just gonna duplicate this. And instead of saying dashboard, we're gonna say settings. And now we have, okay, so now let's just see if that compiles. Okay, it does not. So displaying settings is not a function. So that's because we did not rename this so displaying settings. All right. So now what we can do here is in our control button, we can actually define a style here that's going to tell our app to 
dynamically set a certain property when a property is set. So if we say, if we add in this template syntax here, which we can actually add in a JavaScript expression, what we're going to do here is actually add in a property function, which is going to take in the property, and then it's going to return special CSS if a certain condition is met. Now I know this is this sounds really confusing, but this will this will seem a lot easier in a, in a second after I explain this. So if the props dot active is set. So if props dot active and CSS, another template, and then here we're going to actually set text shadow and then we're going to add in a new font size here. So let's just see if that works first of all. Okay, CSS is not defined. So you got to make sure that you add in styled and CSS inside here. So we're going to be importing the CSS library here. So we are displaying the dashboard here, as you could see currently. So we actually made it smaller. So we're going to make it bigger now. So I'm going to do 1.3 EM. Let's just see if that's bigger. Okay, so a little bit smaller. Or you know what, we're just going to not change the font size. How about that? All right, that works. Okay, so let's explain what we've done again here. Let's walk through this function here. We have the control button, which is a styled component. And inside of this, we have an expression, a JavaScript expression, which will be handled by styled components, where we say if the props.active property is set, which it is only set when the certain page is selected, then we have an and operator here. So if this is a truthful expression, it will continue on to this. If it's not a truthful expression, it, if it's a falsy expression, then it will not include this CSS. So what you're doing is you're basically just adding in a function that will be applied and then it will basically inject CSS into this expression as if it were a regular CSS property. So that that can be done here um, above. So for example, if you added in another text shadow up here, then the, this would override that. So you can add in multiple properties of the same thing. So for example, if to make this simpler, we just said color red, and then up here we had color blue. To demonstrate that, we could see that the red active is being selected there and the blue is, is not being selected. That's the default. So using this, we can really see how we can create some dynamic components here that take in different props and add in new CSS as we want. So that's really cool, a really cool feature of, of styled components. So we're gonna, we're gonna change that back to the text shadow. And again, if we wanna do more into the text shadow, I could show you how I ended up creating this text shadow. So if let's say you're creating a text shadow from scratch, what you would do is you would say zero pixels, zero pixels, and then using this, you can set the blur and spread of that. Okay, great. So now what we're gonna wanna do is add in the click handlers for these control buttons. So when we have a click handler on here, so to specify a click handler, we're simply gonna say on click. And uh, the first thing we're gonna do, so let's see, we're gonna go down here and we're gonna specify another click handler and we're gonna say, we're gonna add in an anonymous function here and we're gonna just say this.setState uh, and we're gonna say page equals to dashboard. And you guessed it, that's gonna set the page state variable in React to be the dashboard or whatever we set. So if here we set the settings uh, here and then over here we're gonna set the dashboard. So if we save that, Okay, so now if we click on settings, you could see that we are now changing the, the state of the React app. So we're creating some dynamic content here. And now the last thing we're gonna do to finish this off is we're gonna add in a cursor pointer. And that's always good to have on buttons to change the cursor on the mouse basically. So, okay, that's it. That's all we're gonna do now. We have a basic layout here where we can change the variables. We can click on here and change the page. And then that can, we can display different content based on that. So we're going to, once again, we're gonna review our commit to make sure that we're adding in good content here into our app. The bar that we've changed, we've added in some new content. We added in some helper functions and yeah, that's it. This is looking good. So we're gonna go ahead and commit this and we're gonna say, finish content and 
with dynamic control button. 